Hey Greg, um, how did how did this happen? How did this really happen? You know, to get on a how did it all happen? You know, you remember the first cover? <laughs> I yeah, I remember the first couple. The first cover was Muscle and Fitness, and um, I was uh, you want the honest story or like the edited version? <laughs> Where are we going here? I was in whatever a, you like. You know? I was in a hotel lobby bar in Washington D.C. I just got back from overseas mm -hmm. in the military, and um, I was at the bar um, getting drunk. And a bunch of my buddies. As a fitness model, okay, we cut this again uh, later on. Yeah. I wasn't a fitness model. I was just a military guy. And um, a guy comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, man, you got a good look. You should come up to my room and get some pictures." And I said, "You know, that sounds like a really bad idea. So I'm gonna pass, man." But I took his card. He ended up being a legit agent. You know, I was in good shape through sports and military. So I took a trip up, trip up to New York, and. Um, you know, we did test shoot, we landed the cover. Um, so that started off real fast that way. And um, and just kind of grew from there, slowly and surely. I mean, there's ups and downs, and it's, you know, some real good days, some real bad days. And But you just got to keep your eyes on the horizon. You can't, you can't get worked up on the daily ins and outs and struggles and external factors that beat on you in life. If you really want it, it takes work ethic, sacrifice, through diligence, sweat equity to get there. And you can get there. And you learn those lessons in the gym that transform yourself from A to B. And what about discipline? What about discipline? Discipline is in the gym, right? You go to the gym, you wake up at 5.30 in the morning, it's raining outside, you don't want to go to the gym, but you get up anyway and you go to the gym. And why? Because you believe in a higher higher cause. So you do that over and over again. Small steps lead to big steps, lead to the big picture of who you are and what you can be. Then all of a sudden, you look in the mirror, you're like, wow, look what I look like. But what have you really gained? You gained a mental toughness, confidence of who you are, that you can take that lesson learned in the gym and transcribe that into all theaters of life, whether that's your social life, your marriage life, corporate America, building up a mailroom to CEO, valuable lessons that are, are, are the bedrock of someone's character that are developed in the gym. 13 years old, right? 13 years old? I'm, just, I'm going to 13. Okay, okay. You're, right, you're in Maryland, right? I, I was born in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, yeah. you're in Maryland. And like, I'm just going to be the top athlete. I'm going to be uh, a ranger at West Point. I mean, yeah. I mean, where was it there? You know, I, I think every foundation is built on a support group. And I was very blessed to have a family structure that to this day are my best friends. I mean, they really are. I get emotional talking about them. Um, but they always gave me the ability to make a decision, even if it's the wrong decision. And then they forced me to follow through because your name's everything. Your word is everything. It has to stand for something. You know, money will come and go, but what do you stand for? Who are you at the peak of the time? <clears throat> Who are you at the bottom of the time? It's like an EKG of life, right? Right. So there's ups and there's downs, but characters should never be subject to the ups or the downs. Mm -hmm. So if you remain true, then no matter what the ups or the downs are, you can manipulate them through hard work and action and, and turn a, a problem into a solution. This, Greg Plitt was a huge inspiration of mine. If you guys don't know Greg, Highly recommend to just like search him. Rest Passed in peace. away in 2015. Yeah, I dedicated my first gym opening to him. Yeah, because um, he was such a had a big impact on my life and just trying to you know take the messages he sort of ingrained and just pass them on. Right. Greg Plitt was a huge inspiration in my life as well. You know, uh, Army Ranger. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously on TV shows and shit, on TV shows, you know, girls, model, everything, like everything. Bro. Maintained being shredded year round, pretty yeah. much was almost always in cover shoot shape. Um, and I was a member on his website, grickplit.com, well, we, back in the day. I am, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and it's it's like it's crazy how um, even now, almost ten years later, uh, he's such is such an inspiration to people, man. His legacy lives on, and that's the fucking life goal, right? And you and you have a mural dedicated to him here yep. at your yeah. gym. So his I thought that was really cool. Really? Like, yeah, they're like, yeah, it was incredible. incredible. No, that's awesome that you still keep his legacy alive. And I mention him every now and then as well on our podcast. Anytime I talk about fitness or who inspired Dance me, so. in the fucking ring. Yeah, right? man. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely. You got it.
it a bit more about Grubplit, um, the, fitne uh, the fitness model. Sure, uh, Grubplit yeah. the fitness model never started out to be a fitness model. I, um, you know, right. I went through the life uh, in the military and sports and I always used the gym for some means. It was never about fitness modeling. Um, I just had a passion for working out. Every time I hit struggles or I was stressed out, I always went to the gym to find solidity there and uh, to work through any kind of stresses. So naturally I got in shape, um, but uh, it wasn't for fitness modeling, it was for military and sports. And then later on, down the road, uh, an agency, agency saw me and said, hey, you should take some pictures. I'm like, oh, I'll try it. And that's how this was born. But it wasn't the starting. I didn't start out, set out for this. It just uh, ended up coming through passion and, and the love of the gym. What is motivation? Motivation for me is that you never have to wonder what if. Um, later in life, the windows of opportunity will always close. As we get older, things are taken from us. Um, but they can never take the memory of us performing our best. So motivation for me is later in life, um, you know, it's hard to take that first step towards greatness in anyone's endeavor. That's the hardest step. But what's harder than that one step is later in life as the windows close and the opportunities cease to exist, thinking back that you could have been great. So I always try to burn the midnight oil right now and give it all I have um, to prevent me from staying awake in the midnight hours, wondering what if. I would, have I always been this charismatic? I would hope so. I would hope so. Um, I think if you do anything in life, you've got you've to believe in it, you know? You can't fake it. Um, there's, enough, there's enough wannabes and copycats in the world. You know, when somebody's original and they really believe in what they're doing, it shows. And it's a breath of fresh air. And I wish the world does more of that. So many people, they try to follow other people's paths. And they take the path that's beaten always. And so the path less travel that they believe in. And that path less travel is a harder, steeper, rockier path. But it leads to a greater view and a greater belief in what, who you are. So if you're going to do anything, do it because you want to, because you believe in it. And if that's the reason why you, you, you start that endeavor, you always finish that cross, cross that finish line. Um, I train really, um, you know, the way I train is you know, no different than anybody else, I guess. I never do the same workout twice. I always keep muscle confusion from cardios and, and uh, you know, running and skydiving. And, you know, I, I, I train to make the world my playground. So, you know, I always go in there and change up the workout, keep my body guessing. I always challenge myself, uh, whether I'm skydiving or bungee jumping or biking or you know, running. And I enjoy the physical life. And um, so by going to the gym, it helps me to, you know, uh, be able to take all this world has to offer in. Um, but, you know, going to the gym, it's not about, like, checking the box, did, you know, paying my dues today. I go in there and I find it, I, I, it's self-discovery. You know, it's like there's something about that eighth rep when you can't do it, you know, of who you are. When you're pushing it, trying to get it up, and do we just quit? Do we just rack it? Or do we rack it, drop the weight, and keep going for the burn? Or do we get someone to spot us? Who are we in that adversity? Do we push past it? Do we try to get more at it? Or do we set? Do we say words like good enough? And if you do say good enough, you're in trouble because you don't know if you have enough until later. So I always say if you never use terms like good enough, tomorrow you always have enough. So I like to leave it all there when I work out, and um, I wouldn't matter what happens later in life, but I know it's you know, not because of my shortcomings done today. You know, those three reps I could have done, is that the difference of me being successful later? I don't know. That's why I do those three reps, so I never have to wonder what if. Tomorrow begins right now. You know, some people say there's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I've never heard of the day called Sunday. Someday I'll become something. Someday I'll start something. It's right now, guys. Today is the day someday arises into something tomorrow will bear the fruits of your labor. It must be that way. The dream that you feel, man, inside, the belief that can be, it must start with action today if tomorrow's ever going to have any bearing of light to it. They say dreams are things that you, know, that, that you see when you're sleeping. I say bullshit. I say dreams are things that keep you from sleeping because you can't wait to become it.